morning. Good morning and welcome to University United Methodist Church. It is such a joy to see all of your faces this Sunday morning. Please rise as you are able and join us in our opening song, The Heart of Worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply call, longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Please remain standing as we sing our next hymn, Trust in You. Letting go of every single dream Lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I try to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I picture by my side When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's 
not a day ahead you have not seen. See when no things be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You are my strength and comfort. You are my steady hand. You are the firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher. Your plans are always good. There's not a place where I go. You've not already stood. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. And it is good to welcome you this morning to this worship service. I'd like to ask Trevor to help me here. There are several announcements and we're going to project some on the screen as we go through. So the first item that we are we, the ministry teams, are requesting is for persons to volunteer to be a part of the Faithful Friends prayer team. And that should be there. <laughs> um, and, and primarily, it's, it's to continue to deepen our partnership with C.T. Vivian Primary School. And it's by praying, committing to pray for the adults and children, the families that are there. It matters not if you know them. Please don't diminish the power of God like that. God knows all, whether you know all about them or not. And so to allow and, and trust for God to be in relationship through your prayers with them would be a critical, helpful piece along the way. And dovetailing right along with that is to be a prayerful mentor. And that, again, is with CT Vivian Primary School. Several of you did that last year in connecting and, and being that mentor with children. It's an unbelievable experience to build a relationship with a child that you have an opportunity to be a role model for and to affirm them, to partner with them, and to let them know that there are people everywhere that might just care about them. So uh, Carrie Borland, I did not see Carrie here, um, but if either one of those you're interested in doing, you need to contact her, and there's a whole process that she will explain to you. So those are two opportunities to be the church. Another one is coming next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock in the dining room. Now, many of you know exactly where that dining room is. I know that. And sometimes you're there to do, during the school year, to pack snack packs. But this time, it's a little different. First of all, school isn't happening. But it's an opportunity to put together care bags. And we did this back on 
Maundy Thursday for that worship service, and it was just a very meaningful experience. And Julie Kramer and Pat, Pat, there you are. You're right in front of me, but up closer to heaven. That's my problem. Uh, are in charge of that. So again, if you have questions, you can talk to them. But at 9 o'clock, everything will be provided. It's a matter of your showing up and being in assembly line. Basically, that's how it works. Also, after you do the goodness, the good part next Sunday morning, you can turn around at 5 o'clock and be a part of Funsters and celebrate the fun of being a part of this church community. That information is on the back of the bulletin and you can contact, Kim is back here today if you want to contact her and let her know about that, if you can be attending. On the 27th, the following week, so if you think the university is just kind of resting during the summer, get over it. We're fully engaged. But on the 27th, on Saturday at 9 a.m. at Epic, uh, Foster Village, who houses part of Cartwright Hall, will be celebrating their second year birthday party. Tickets are $35 to come and be at the table. If you have questions, Barbara, I know you're down front, but there may be somebody here that can't see you. So would you just raise your hand real quick? There you are, and she could help you and have access to getting those tickets if you would like to participate that in that. And then next Sunday evening, or on following that event on Sunday the 28th, is an ice cream social block party. Now, you do not see on this, though it was in the link, that if you are willing to help in some ways to contact Jan Deisler, please discontinue doing that. Jan is struggling with her health. Most of us know that. And so I am asking you if you can help in any way to connect with Jane Ferguson. And Jane, would you, yeah, you can do that. You taught school, you know how to raise your hand, don't you? Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, to connect with her, we need to kind of move that responsibility over into another arena. And at the same time, if I dare be so bold to say to, to wrap your prayers, around Jan and Emil during this time. A lot happening here. A lot will continue to happen because that's how it works with the people of God. And that's who we are. So I would ask that you join in the prayer. Do we have that up there? The affirmation of faith. And you may remain standing or sitting for that. I believe in the God who made the lakes and the mountains, who shaped the sky and the sea and all who inhabit the earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his son, whose life and death and resurrection to remind us of the presence of the creator in all that is. I believe in the Holy Spirit of God who dwells in the hearts of all convicting us of sin and moving us toward love and joy in our lives. I believe in the church and its ministry to the world, making ways for the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit to be more real in people's lives. I believe in the life to come, foreshadowed by the life we are living now. And I believe in the importance of worship for reminding me of all these things and enabling me to recenter my life 
amid the people of God. Amen. And let us stand with a sense of celebration for God has brought us to this moment as we join in singing the song of celebration. You may be seated. I always stand in the need of prayer, and I would hope every Christian would be quick to acknowledge that need as well. I would hope that those who live in this land, a land that we often say a land of liberty, would recognize the need for prayer on this day I would hope that within those prayers that we could move from the sense and what appears to be a necessity of spilling hatred to finally embracing a necessity to respecting opinion but never be destructive of another human being. I'll be quick to affirm that in my lifetime, there have been many people who've walked into my life, some I've ended up loving deeply and dearly, and some I've even wondered how much longer, God, do I have to be in their presence? And then there's this whole group in the middle. But whether I like what they have to say or don't like, it's irrelevant. Because I have chosen to be Christian. That's the guiding precept. And there is no place in Christianity for hatred. I would hope that we, being the people of faith, would make a covenant on this day 
that we will focus the most we can about recognizing that God called every person into this world, whether we like him or not. <laughs> That's where the tension comes to play. There's enough death, there's enough fear, there's enough hatred that it's time to rise up and demonstrate love. So more than ever, most of the evening and into the lateness of the night, I kept praying. I prayed that I would have the words to lead you in a pastoral prayer this morning, encompassing the needs within this community of the faithful, some that are facing surgery, some that are struggling with just the debil debilitating issues of disease, encompassing their lives, their bodies. Some of us, just with every moment of time, are growing older. <laughs> but it's this moment to which God has called us. So I invite you to join in, and all this was done beforehand, please know that, but to join in singing together the first verse of it is well with my soul and after our prayer time the second verse It is with gratitude, O oh God, we come to you in prayer. For you have given us the gift of life and daily blessings, like the music of birds, the joy of seeing a smile on a loved one's face, the warmth of the sun on our backs, and the hug of a friend. For these gifts, which we so often take for granted, in these moments we focus on them and offer you our thanks and our praise. Especially do we thank you for the presence when we come to you in the dark nights of our souls. when our companion is not faith, but we're overwhelmed with fear, not certainty, but doubt. When we are besieged with anxious questions, oh God, help us to be still. Remind us of all that we have right now, which assures us of your love for us. 
In the midst of our darkness, let us be reminded that you enter into our pain and that our prayers of fear and doubt are actually prayers of deepest faith for they assume your presence even when we feel that it's not there. Oh God, we tend to be discouraged when something doesn't go our way. We strike out, we, we hold on to resentments which prevent us from moving forward in love. We linger over words we have spoken in haste and soon our hearts are full of resentment instead of bubbling over with gratitude. We come to believe that we have nothing when in fact, because of you, we have everything. Help us to remember, Lord, Help us to look upon each person in the spirit of gratitude for there at that moment are in our midst. And help us, those of us who live within the boundaries of this country, to understand and to commit our hearts and minds to firmly saying, there is nothing more important than life. And keep us from ever harming life. This we ask in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Out of gratitude for the blessings, perhaps undeserving, but we have received. We are transformed by them to be a blessing for others. In the giving of our offering, that blessing becomes real. I would invite our ushers to come forward to wait upon us now to make those blessings a reality. I came back to him, a vessel unworthy, so scarred from sin. But he did not despair, he started over again. 
again. And I bless the day he didn't throw the clay away. Over and over he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay, a vessel of honor I am today, all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. He is the potter, I am the clay, molded in his image, he wants me to stay. But when I stumble, when I fall, when my vessel breaks, he just picks up those pieces. He doesn't throw the clay away. Over and over, he molds me and makes me into his likeness. He fashions the clay a vessel of honor I am today, all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. A vessel of honor I am today, all because Jesus didn't throw the clay away. Please join, stand as you are able and join us as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father and the Son. Praise Father and the Son. From whom all blessings flow, praise Him. From whom all blessings flow, praise Father and the Son. Praise Father and the Son. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Source of life. You, O oh God, may the works of our hands always bring you honor. May the life we live reflect the risen word of life. And may the service we offer be inspired by the breath of life. Amen. And you may be seated. The reading of the scripture comes from the book of Ephesians this morning, the first chapter, verses 3 through 13, and I'm reading the version of, from the Common English Bible. 
Bless the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that comes from heaven. God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless in God's presence before the creation of the world. God destined us to be his adopted children through Jesus Christ because of his love. This was according to his good will and plan and to honor his glorious grace that he has given to us freely through the son whom he loves. We have been ransomed through his son's blood and we have forgiveness for our failures based on his overflowing grace, which he poured over us with wisdom and understanding. God revealed his hidden design to us, which is according to his good will and the plan that he intended to accomplish through his son. This is what God planned for the climax of all times, to bring all things together in Christ, the things in heaven along with the things on earth. We have also received an inheritance in Christ. We are destined by the plan of God who accomplishes everything according to his design. We are called to be an honor to God's glory because we were the first to hope in Christ. You too heard the word of truth in Christ, which is the good news of your salvation. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit because you believe in Christ. Here in the reading of God's holy word. I just wanted to um, say for those that don't know Tom, I don't know where you've been, but um, we're just, I just wanted to say, I'm, Emily and I are both so grateful to Tom and the leader that he is in our small but mighty choir and for, for him to bring new Christian music to us to perform for this um, solo Sunday. I'm just appreciative of him and I hope you enjoy this next piece. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. Though troubles linger still, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. And nothing formed against me shall stand. You hold the whole world in your hands. I'm holding on to your promises. You are faithful. You are 
are faithful. You are faithful. I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The God of angel armies is always by my side. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Tom. Last year, and I know you remember this, but last year, much of your family did special music, right? So let me be the first to say, boy, you carried them well today. <laughs> So their family, <laughs> let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations that are on the hearts of all of us, so God, be acceptable unto you. For you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. This piece that I read to you, of course, all of Ephesians, is authored by Paul, the apostle. And, and I, I really like what Paul has to say. It's just that I have to remove my mind from so many years of being that English teacher. He just, it's almost run on sentences after sentences. I just, you know, I guess they probably didn't have semicolons back then. It would have helped someone like me a great deal. But I refuse to let that overtake the message. What he shares is powerful, and it's really one of the precepts of our being who we are. It's grace, grace. And I, I wanted to stop you, Tom, and say the first song that you sang is about grace. And then I thought, no, wait, he's gonna do something else. And it was about grace. And we didn't work this out ahead of time, but it's just the way God works. God's unearned, merited, unmerited love is what unites us and binds us together. We never know when it's going to enter our lives. And it's always there, always available. We just never know when the grace of the kingdom of God is going to intercede, find a crack in us, and there it is, over and over again. Sometimes out of the clear blue, perhaps even when we least expect it, grace happens. Our spirits are lifted, and grace, I thought, is kind of like, in this day and age, like receiving an upgrade to first class on an airline. Thus, the sermon title, Flying First Class. If you, on your own time, look back at this scripture, you'll see again and again that God intercedes in our lives even when we least expect it and or deserve it. But let me move to a different piece. Have you ever flown first class? Oh, oh, 
Raise them up again. Let me see who's special. Aha. Aha. Well, my first time flying first class was what I called for a long time a real fluke. A real fluke. You see, there was something, now they're called the United Women in Faith, but then they were called United Methodist Women. And every four years, the off cycle of general conference, so two years after every general conference, there'd be this massive gathering of United Methodist women, primarily in this country, but also globally. And when I was in seminary, that event was happening in Philadelphia that year. And I really wanted to go because a good number of people who had wrapped their hearts and spirits and prayers around me had been United Methodist women. Uh-huh. So I, though I don't often acknowledge this quickly, a lot of my DNA comes through that route. And when they are functioning the right way, they are really an incredibly good positive missional group of the church. But I wanted to go, and I had no money to fly from Denver to Philadelphia. None. So being the kind of person I was, I always was pretty independent. I had to take care of myself. I had to find a way. And there was an ad, and then it was called the Denver Post, that there was um, a company that was looking for people to do inventories at night. And you would start in January. Well, this event would be, well, was in April. And I thought January, February, and March, that should give me enough time to earn enough money to get an airline ticket to go to Philadelphia. And so I did that, and I had to show up at the place of business at 11 o'clock at night and work until 4 in the morning. So if I don't tell you, somebody will finally say, where did you work? I know you all. So it was a liquor store. And, and as they said to me after they interviewed me, well, you're probably the best bet we could have. You'll never break into any of the bottles. <laughs> no, nope, I won't. And so I did that. And I earned enough money for a ticket. And I earned enough money, money for my portion of the, the motel room and where I would be flying into the airport, I, the motel was quite a distance, so somebody said to me, you better get cab money. I never thought about how one would eat. That wasn't important. It was getting there, having that experience. So, we landed in St. Louis. And when we got ready to take off again, somebody came on and said, we're overbooked. Now, these were the days when they would start bargaining with you if somebody would get up or give their seat. And I started to do that right away. And the man sitting next to me said, oh, don't do it now. You'll get a lot more if you wait. And I said, well, how do you know? And he said, oh, trust me. Just trust me. And that's true. It was TWA. And I came out with a $500 voucher. 
and I thought I had died and gone to heaven. Now, the only problem was, you see, I would have to stay at St. Louis because the next flight, what they call the red eye, and take it at 11 o'clock to get into Philadelphia. And it never dawned on me that somebody might be worried about me. But I did well until I got to the motel and in the lobby were all these people from then Illinois saying, where have you been? What has happened to you? Oh, I'm fine. They were not happy with me. On the way back though, that's when I really got rich. Because not everybody showed up to ride in first class. And this time, I was the last one to board for whatever reason. And the stewardess said to me, we have this one seat open in first class. Would you like it? And I said, being naive, what's it going to cost me? Nothing, nothing. And it was an unbelievable experience. Just really unbelievable. The food didn't taste like the rubber chicken that I had had back in economy. And I no longer had stale bread or half-done veggies. And better yet, I no longer had child size party silverware. I had real utensils. And for dessert, actually had fresh fruit. I didn't think it could get any better. I think flying first class, particularly when I didn't have to pay for it, was really great. But I also think it's a good metaphor for the kind of life God wants us to live in Christ. Paul tells us how God wants to lavish the riches of his grace upon us. And to me, that's like being elevated or upgraded to first class. You see, in the world's eyes, so many people really believe that they're worthless until they can do something big, until somebody can recognize them and see all the good they have done. But in God's eyes, we're all God's children. And God really doesn't want anything more than to lavish God's love on us. That's it. God offers us, if I could change Paul's way of saying it, an upgrade, an immediate upgrade. As years went by, there have been numerous times that I have had to fly, none that I have ever enjoyed doing. I am not a flyer, period. But I have observed people who do do that. And one couple, I couldn't help but notice. You know how many times there's a curtain that's drawn between um, those of us who don't have versus those of us who do have in the first class? And, and sometimes they leave that curtain open for a while while they're waiting upon those special people who have paid for that service. And this elderly couple were sitting there. And, I mean, they were really elderly. Not like any of you. I mean really elderly. And two servicemen came on. And I could see all this. And this elderly couple got up and I thought, well, isn't that cordial? Just to greet them and honor them, respect them. And they had this pleasant conversation. And how did I know it was pleasant? Not because I could hear it, but I could see their faces. And pretty soon... The elderly couple was coming back to the place where I was assigned. And these two servicemen had the upgrade. 
I turned to the elderly couple who actually were sitting now across from me, and I said, boy, that was really neat of you to do. And he smiled, and he says, you know, we have been so blessed. We have been so blessed in life, so whenever we fly, now get this, whenever we fly, we buy first class. And we do it with the intent of whoever we see giving them our seats and taking the seats behind. Wow. Now that, that fellow was not a preacher, but he was probably one of the most powerful preachers in that moment I could have heard. And he said, we've done that for, he said, I just don't know how many years. Honey, he looked at his wife and said, do you know how many years we've been doing this? She said, no, I just know, George, you're going to continue to do it. We've done it for pregnant women. We've done it for people, mothers who come in with little toddlers that are just beyond themselves. But we give them our seats. And then he said, it's really nothing. It's nothing because God has blessed us. Can't have it any better, he said, than God's blessings. And, and, and then he added, I don't know what you do. Do I tell him? No. He says, I don't know what you do, but if you can find a way to make sure that you realize the blessings you have, it makes life a lot more fun when you share them. Yes, it does. That couple was living a first-class life in Christ. And he, they were enabling others to have that upgrade. That's been the metaphor, the story for humanity for a long time. I know many of you have, have spoken at times to me about the plays, the musicals you love. And yes, I do as well. But maybe one of them was the 1998 release of Les Miserables. Partially because of the music. I love good music. But it's the story that Victor Hugo wrote. You see, there's a bishop in that story. And there's an ex-convict in that story, Jean Valjean. And Jean Valjean just doesn't think he'll ever have any worth because he is an ex-convict. And he has a yellow passport, so to speak, that'll never get him out of the horror. And he lives that horror of having been in that prison in these nightly sweats and dreams. Today, we would call it PTSD. And he tries to hide what he has done, but he really wanted, he really wanted something to make sure that he would never have to go back to prison again, something of value, something that would have monetary value. And so he stole. He stole from the bishop, the silverware. And when eventually he is caught and brought back, the bishop says in conversation, why didn't you take the candlesticks also? Oh my goodness. Yes, the bishop says, I gave him the silverware, but... <laughs> It was just really foolish of you not to take more. And he sends his housekeeper then to fetch the candlesticks. And he tells to Jean Von John that if you don't hurry, you're going to lose time. What that bishop was doing was offering grace to him. 
outright grace. Now, there are many of us who would have judged and said, you don't deserve that at all. Because that's how the secular world looks at many anymore. If anybody deserves an upgrade, we say, me, myself, and I do. Because it's really all about me. And sometimes we even let the church be like that. Sometimes we forget the whole concept of church is about giving away, not receiving the medals for what's been done. To become Christ-like, when that happens, is we move up to first class. You see, it's hard for some of us to realize that Jesus really did come to reach out to the least, the lost, and the lonely. He came to redeem and upgrade those of us who are banged up a little, those of us who are disenfranchised. He came to lift up the weak and the outcasts. And he spent his time among the rejected. He took the wretched of the world and he healed them. And he took the orphans of the world and he made them sons and daughters of God. Brothers and sisters with Christ as a part of the kingdom. Jesus took the powerless and made them the priestly kingdom. <clears throat> he loved them and he loves us all because he can. And here's the catching point. Jesus knows that every one of us, no matter how banged up our lives are, every one of us is good for something. So how dare we have the audacity to even think about moving somebody away from the dinner table. How dare we? You see, God gave his riches for us. And our challenge is to accept the gift of God's grace and not to squander it. But it's up to you and me. We have free will, we have choice. The offer is there. You can accept God's grace and upgrade and fly first class. Or you can refuse it and just return to the cramped economy class seat and whine for the rest of your life about what you didn't have. To paraphrase Joshua, when he was getting ready at the Jordan to cross over, he turned to the Israelites. He stopped them and he turned to them and he just said, as for me and my house, we're accepting, if I dare paraphrase, the upgrade and flying first class. Or as Joshua said it, me and my people are going to live in the house of the Lord. It will bring God so much joy when we recognize it's not the concentration that we're unworthy, it's the opposite. We are so very worthy. It's time to rise up and literally for some of you, panic, because I might ask you to say hallelujah or amen. I'm that good. Instead of saying, I'm not very good. I don't have much to offer. I, I would like to do more, but I can't. 
And before long, we wrap ourselves in a psychological dilemma that's basically slapping God right in the face. Because every single person is born through the Spirit of God. And how dare any of us have the audacity to think that somebody is less? Yeah. It's time for us to take the upgrade and start flying first class through all of our living. Amen. Please rise as you are able as we sing our last hymn, Victory in Jesus.
So now, I'm sending you forth with the prayer that the hope of God will be with you and will keep your eyes open. And that the God of peace will still your anxious mind. And that the God of love will fill your heart to fullness beyond all measure. So go now in the hope and the peace and the love of God. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you always flying first class. Amen. in peace. We will see you next Sunday.